Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our latest webinar, Fluorescent Tube Ban, Everything You Need to Know. With the upcoming ban on fluorescent tubes in the UK and Europe, we thought it was the perfect time to set up a webinar to explain everything you need to know about the ban and why you should upgrade to LED. So just to introduce myself, I'm Charlotte Loudon, Raytex Senior Digital Marketing Executive, and I'll be hosting today's webinar. I'll also be joined by my colleague, Andy Oliver, Raytex Regional Sales Manager for the UK and Ireland, who will be running you through the main bulk of the webinar. And I'll also be joined by David Peters, Raytex Hazardous Area Product Manager, who will be joining us for the Q&A session at the end. So just a quick note, if you have any questions, please submit them in the question section on your GoToWebinar control panel and we'll answer them at the end of the webinar. We'll also be adding the recording of the webinar to our website after the webinar. So I'll now pass you over to Andy. Hi guys, uh, this is Andy Oliver, I'm Regional Sales Manager for the UK. Um, I'm just going to go through the agenda for today. So section one is going to be the ban, um, and scales and key dates, what is being banned and why, and the impact of the ban. Section two, all about grading LED and what are the options, and finally specifying the correct LED luminaire and how we use optics, the impact of maintenance and high output LED options. So, section one, let's begin by taking a look at BAN in a little bit more detail. So, from September 2023, next month, a couple of weeks, the manufacture and sale of T5 and T8 fluorescent tubes are being banned from being placed on the market. Now, placed on the market is an important term to understand. It means the transfer of, from ownership from the manufacturer. So wholesalers or resellers who have already purchased or stocked supplies of fluorescent tubes will still be able to sell them onto consumers after the 1st of, 20, 1st of September 2023 deadline. So what is being banned? The ban also applies to other forms of fluorescent lamps, such as compact fluorescents called CFLs, halogen pins and fluorescent lamps in ring form or circular fluorescents. Well, predominantly these are used in domestic and light commercial applications that are unlikely to affect luminaires that are being used in the hazardous area or industrial applications. And at the moment, this just applies to UK and EU fluorescent tube manufacturing and sale. Um, but as time goes on, it will be um, made an effective, uh, a globally effective ban. Why is the ban being introduced? The ban on the fluorescent tubes has been introduced as a result of changes to the ROHS directive and due to the fact that they contain mercury, which is considered a hazardous substance. The presence of mercury and other phosphors in the fluorescent tubes also means there are strict regulations in place to control their disposal. Mercury is an important toxic pollutant, which makes the tubes an environmental hazard. Although the use of mercury in electrical equipment is already prohibited, T5 and T8 fluorescent tubes have previously been exempt as special purpose lamps, primarily for commercial and the hazardous area market. However, the latest amendments to the ROHS directive will see this exemption removed and the ban will come into place on the 1st of September. In the short term, while the ban will prevent tubes from being placed on the market, i.e. manufactured, 
P5 and P8 groups may still be available via the resale channels for a limited amount of time, again, from resellers or wholesalers who have stock of this particular commodity. <clears throat> this may well lead resellers looking for stockpile and make a final purchase of tubes, but end users really do need to consider the fact that these will be a finite source. Once the stock's gone, that's it, there'll be no more availability. As I've just said, no more tubes can be placed on the market. And due to this fact, the prices of stock could significantly increase as retailers look to cash in on those people who still want to use the fluorescents. So while stocks last, you may be able to buy your fluorescent tubes. However, this isn't guaranteed and could easily become quite a costly affair. Longer term, end users won't be able to get hold of fluorescent tubes. And this means there will be lighting dead spots on plan, on site, which obviously could become a health and safety hazard. And ultimately, end users are going to need to replace their existing lighting with alternative technology such as LED. So what's a solution? Well, obviously, you can stock up on fluorescent tubes, but it's expensive, it takes up space, and they will eventually run out. So the only real solution is to look at replacing these fluorescent fittings with a more modern, efficient, and cost-effective LED luminaire. And in the next few slides, we'll explore this in some more detail. So we're shortly going to look at the different options when upgrading to LED available. But just to just going to recap on the benefits of an LED luminaire compared to older fluorescent fittings. So we'll start with a performance comparison. Extreme temperatures have a significant effect on the performance of fluorescent fittings, whereas LEDs are much more able to perform in, in, a, in extreme temperatures. In the next few slides, we'll demonstrate the performance uplift you can expect to achieve with LED compared to fluorescent units. So in this instance, we've compared a like-for-like -like replacement installation, 20 fluorescent luminaires, and compared it with 20 equivalent Spartan linear luminaires. We've measured performance using lumen output of the total installation and how it varied across different temperature ratings and also factored in the effect of degradation and maintenance. LED is represented by the red lines on the graph. So here showing the performance of the WL84, the equivalent physical size of a two by 18 watt fluorescent, uh, or say two foot, and a WL168, the equivalent of a twin four foot or a two by 36 watt fluorescent. Then if we add in the data of the fluorescence, straight away we can see that the WL168 LED can far outperform their equivalent 2 by 36 watt. This is despite the lumen output figure quoted by the fluorescent fittings being similar to the LED alternative. The first thing to try and understand is why is this difference so vast when the claimed outputs are so similar. The variance can largely be explained due to the inefficiency of fluorescent technology which results in a large proportion of the output being lost. So let's look at an example using a 2 by 36 watt fluorescent. So a typical twin 4 foot fluorescent has an efficiency of 68.3%, of which 93.2% is downward light. The other 6.8 is wasted. Using two tubes with an initial lumen output of 3,350 lumens, this fitting will provide a total of 6,700 lumens when brand new. Taking into account the efficiency and percentage of downward light allows us to calculate the usable downward lumens. So 6,700 times 0.683 times 0.932, which were the numbers I previously quoted, equals 4,265 usable downward lumens. In contrast, the lumen figures quoted on all Spartan linear all Spartan products, and Spartan linear specifically, are delivered lumens where any losses have already been included. The extent of these differences mean that a WL84 LED luminaire, which normally matches up to a twin two foot, two by 18 watt fluorescent, provides a superior output to a much larger two by 36 watt fluorescent fitting in all but the most optimum of conditions. 
After looking at the differences in performance between brand new fittings, the next step is to consider the effect of time and how the fittings perform over the duration of their life. The first interval we look at is 8,000 hours, so just under one year of constant operation. So after 8,000 hours, there is already a significant degradation in the performance of the fluorescent fittings. The cause of this lumen depreciation is mainly due to the photochemical degradation of the phosphor coating and the glass tube. In contrast, the LED Spartan has maintained an output almost identical to the first graph thanks to a near 0% failure rate and virtually zero degradation. Fast forward to another six months of constant operation and the degradation of the fittings of the fluorescent fittings has continued at a significant rate. Even in the most optimum conditions, the fluorescent fittings have lost 37% of the total lumen output across the installation, compared to the LED fittings, which have seen just a 6% reduction. With the level of performance after 18 months, a WL84 two-foot unit now provides superior light output in all conditions over a twin four-foot 36-watt fluorescent. When beyond 18 months, the performance of the fluorescent fittings will continue to deteriorate to the point of rendering them close to useless in all but the most optimum of environmental conditions. In contrast, the LED Spartan Linear has provided a consistent level of output and will continue to do so for another 100,000 hours or more. Now let's take a look at the maintenance. Now, maintenance is a key factor in the hazardous area world and something to consider when selecting the right luminaire for your project. A fluorescent tube will degrade over time and must be replaced multiple times over the lifetime of the luminaire to ensure a consistent performance level. Maintaining a site with a large number of fluorescent fittings will become impossible due to the lack of availability purchase of the tubes and during the short term where they're available through sockets. Maintaining a site using, a large numbers of, using large numbers of fluorescent fittings will either become A, impossible due to the lack of availability, or B, simply not cost effective due to increased market prices. With an LED luminaire, however, there is no need for relamping, so the number of maintenance interventions over the course of the product's life will be significantly reduced. And of course, there are no restrictions or bans in place which will limit the supply of an LED luminaire or its components. So before we look at a more in-depth, uh, before we look at more in-depth on why specifying LED over fluorescent lighting is a great alternative, it's useful to recap on some of the expected advantages of LED luminaires. So longer life. Fluorescent luminaires are more prone to failure compared to LEDs which have a near 0% failure rate. Lower maintenance with no need for relamping. The long life of LEDs means that unlike fluorescent fittings, there is no requirement for ongoing lamp changes over the course of an LED luminaire's lifetime. A more consistent light output. Over time, over time a fluorescent luminaire will lose almost 40% of its little lumens compared to an LED fitting, which will lose just a fraction of this figure and better performance under extreme temperatures. Unlike fluorescents, LED equivalents are largely unaffected by extreme temperatures, be it hot or cold. So we know that the solution to the upcoming ban is to replace your fluorescent fittings with an LED alternative, but there are lots of factors you should consider when specifying an LED luminaire. So we'll look at this in a little bit more detail now. <coughs> So retrofit, let's take a look at the options for retrofitting your fluorescent fittings with LED. Generally, manufacturers use the term retrofit in one of two ways. A retrofit, can be a solu retrofit solution can be an effective way to make the upgrade process more straightforward and reduce installation costs. Effectively, there are two different concepts when it comes to retrofit solutions which manufacturers can offer. So option one, because there are so many fluorescent fittings installed in the field, and we are talking hundreds of thousands, the manufacturers who originally supplied them naturally want to capture some of that upgrade or retrofit market. To do this, they offer LED kits, where the existing fluorescent tubes or control gear, or both, 
can be removed and then replaced by a specially designed LED kit. Option two, other manufacturers who offer replacement LED fittings which have the same dimensions, fixing sensors and cable entries as the traditional fluorescent fittings already installed. The argument for option one is that it is a quick, low cost fix. In reality, we find that these kits can almost be as expensive as the original or the replacement luminaire themselves, but furthermore, this method of upgrading is fundamentally flawed. And we'll look at this in the next slide. <clears throat> Just bear with me because my slide isn't moving on. My apologies. There we go. We know that LEDs offer greater lifetime and require less maintenance than fluorescence. However, this is only achieved when paired with an official, an official term management system, GRP or glass reinforced plastic, which is the most traditional fluorescent things made from, is a very poor conductor of heat. The LEDs in option one are more likely to get hot because the heat is trapped within the luminaire. This means degradation will increase, lifetime will be decreased, and the likelihood of failure will also go up, all of which are effectively the traits you'd expect to see with a traditional fluorescent fitting. In a bespoke LED fitting that is purposely built to house the LEDs, the LEDs should have proper thermal management, meaning it can deliver all the benefits of the LEDs which you would expect. So to summarize, why upgrade to LED in the first place if you're not taking advantage of all the benefits which LED has to offer? Now we know the reasons why using a bespoke LED housing is so important, we know which of these two options provides the best solution. But yes, option one does provide a quick fix, but that's all it really is. And I'm sure many of you will know from experience that a quick fix isn't always the right choice. Plus, in reality, these solutions might not be as easy to fit as you might think. All depends on the manufacturer and the system that they use. In some instances, it will actually be quicker to remove the fitting entirely and replace it with a bespoke LED retrofit. And as I mentioned earlier, it might be not—it might not be as cost-effective as you'd think. The cost of the replacement kit can nearly be as much as a replacement fitting. Replacing the full unit with a bespoke LED lighting unit that has bespoke housing built around the LEDs, using the same dimensions, fixing centers, and cable entries as the fluorescent fitting means it would be a direct replacement. And obviously, we would always recommend this solution. Now, the type of retrofit luminaire you should look for, let's re revisit option B and consider some of the more practical, consideration, practical considerations around installation. To be classed as a retrofit, the new luminaire should have the same dimensions, cable entries, and fixing sensors as a traditional fluorescent. The dimensions, the replacement LED linear, linear should be the same size as your existing fluorescent, additionally two foot and four foot sizes. And a replacement luminaire of the same size means that the existing cables won't have to stretch any further so they can still be used on the new installation. The fixing sensors. Now the luminaire should also have the same fixing sensors as the existing fluorescent. If these are located in the same position and have the same thread and depth as the fluorescent, then the same brackets can be used. And from a common sense point of view, utilizing the same brackets on a job could save significant costs during the installation. And cable entries. Having the same size and quantity of cable entries will also mean that the same glands can be used, providing, of course, that they are still ATEX compliant. Traditionally, there will be two M20 entries at each end to allow for through wiring and or looping, loop out setups. Combine all of these elements together and you have a replacement LED luminaire, which is plug and play replacement, which will reduce the time and cost of the installation compared to a product which hasn't been designed with these features in mind. A true retrofit solution.
So installing an LED luminaire that has been designed with ease of maintenance in mind offers the end user many benefits. It's important to know that the luminaires that are certified for use in hazardous areas possess special features which can render them suitable for use in these environments. Routine inspections are therefore required over the lifetime of the luminaire to ensure these special features are preserved, as well as the fact that ease of maintenance will be different between LED linear fittings on the market. Some luminaires are sealed for life, which means you can't interchange components in the luminaire, and if opened, the certification could well be void. Luminaires with a modular design allow maintenance to be carried out on site, reducing downtime for the end user. Spare parts are interchangeable and can be removed independently, while the ability to mount key components remotely can also make access for maintenance much easier. The key feature of a modular luminaire is that maintenance can be done on site and there is no need to return the unit back to the manufacturer. This is especially important for applications where access is restricted, such as offshore, or where the ability to maintain the luminaire on site can provide significant long term cost savings. For high output LED linears, advances in LED technology has brought a steep change in the performance of LED luminaires with the availability of our new high output variants. The advancement in LED technology means that luminaires are now available which offer significantly higher levels of performance than retrofit solutions designed as a light for light fluorescent replacement. The Spartan linear luminaires that we used for comparison in the last section are now available as high output variants, which offer significantly improved performance, as you can see from the next table. Using the same conditions that we've set out in the performance section of the webinar, but now adding in the Spartan linear high output variants, we can see the extent of the performance upgrade compared to the standard WL84 LED luminaire, but even more significant when compared to traditional fluorescence. From the graph, you can see a huge performance uplift for the WL84HO compared to the 2x18 watt fluorescent. The extent of the performance jump means end users can use a smaller, more efficient solution than before. It also means the linear format can be deployed at increased mountain heights, which provides a much better cost-effective alternative to a traditional bay fitting solution. And the overall fitting cost. In certain cases, you can significantly reduce the number of fittings you have to use, which reduces the overall cost of the installation. So, a win, 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 if you ask us. To summarize, HO Linear is designed to be used in new installations where the same light output can be achieved using a smaller unit, and in certain cases, this will save on the overall cost of the installation. High output linear provides the maximum level of performance and efficiency. For new installations, however, these factors are less relevant and the end user can focus on specifying the most efficient and cost effective solution. And they can also be used as a cost effective solution to traditional base style fittings. More power equals greater mounting heights. In this final section, we're going to look at is optics. <coughs> So, the formation of optics on both style of fittings. <clears throat> LEDs are naturally better suited to linear style fittings because all the light is targeted down where it's needed, whereas the cylindrical design of a fluorescent tube means there will always be some degree of wasted light from a fluorescent fitting. If retrofitting fitting an existing fluorescent fitting, you might want to use an LED linear which mimics the beam angle of your existing fluorescent. However, you should also consider modern LED fittings which are available with a choice of optics which may allow you to target the light more effectively. The latest LED luminaires, such as the Spartan Linear, are now available with a choice of secondary optics, which is a method of directing light into a controlled beam, and these optics can be used for different applications, such as aisle, corridor, or perimeter lighting schemes. A linear luminaire with these optics gives specifiers more flexibility when designing a lighting scheme and ensures the light can be targeted exactly where needed to deliver maximum efficiency. By targeting the light from only where it's needed, end users can benefit from higher quality lighting schemes with improved uniformity and can also reduce the number of luminaires required 
across a lighting scheme and hence save costs. And the next slide will demonstrate how using optics can direct LED light more effectively. Looking at a typical corridor application, on the left, <clears throat> we can see a lighting design created using a linear luminaire using a standard beam angle designed to provide a similar spread of light to that of traditional fluorescent fitting. The results were quite patchy with a lot of the light being wasted against the wall, leaving dark areas along the floor as you continue down the corridor. Now if we compare that with the same, if we compare that with the same design but using the new linear generation 2, and this is utilizing an optic specifically designed for corridors, we can see that the floor has a much more even light distribution without too much of that light being wasted against the walls and giving a much more uniform illumination along the ground and free from dark areas. This is another view of the same design. The two corridors parallel with each other inside the black rectangle and again we can visually see how much better the results are using the linear with a dedicated optics suited to the application. If we drill down into some of the numbers, so starting with a standard beam angle, we're getting an average of 35 lux with a minimum of just under 14 and a uniformity of 0.38. Overall, not brilliant. In comparison with dedicated walkway optics using the equivalent size, we're achieving an average of over 50, a minimum of over 37 lux and a uniformity of 0.74, which is a huge improvement. And this slide just reinforces that flexibility. This time is handrail lighting. Um, and handrail lighting applications can be notoriously difficult to achieve good results when using linear fittings. Much like the corridor example previously, we can see on the image to the right that we're getting a much better uniformity of light using those dedicated optics. So, summary. What's been discussed? The ban on fluorescent tubes will come into effect on the 1st of September this year. From that point, fluorescent tubes can no longer be placed onto the market. If you haven't already, we recommend that you upgrade your existing fluorescence to an LED alternative as soon as possible. The availability of spare parts and tubes for fluorescent fittings will be very limited and likely to become very expensive. Existing fluorescent fittings could be rendered useless or uneconomical very quickly. We've discussed that LED luminaires offer many benefits over fluorescent fittings. They're better suited to exceptional temperatures and suffer less from degradation and require less maintenance. When specifying an LED luminaire, we always recommend swapping your fluorescence out for an entirely new bespoke LED fitting, rather than looking for kits which allow you to fit LEDs inside an existing fluorescent housing. This will provide the most reliable and cost-effective solution in the long term. We'd also encourage you to consider other elements when choosing between LED luminaires. An LED linear, which is easy to maintain, is available with a choice of optics and comes as a high output variant with increased power, which allows you to specify the perfect solution when replacing an existing fluorescent or for new applications. So to explore further, you can download our white paper, which is available on the website and also in the um, in the handout section on the go to tool page and everything we've discussed in this webinar is on there and you can also oh, find this out on the control panel so thank you very much um, if you've got any questions i'll now hand you back to charlotte who will deal with those and myself and david will look to answer those to the best of our ability thanks andy um i'll just move on to some questions then so we have a question here from James. So he's asking, can I just swap out fluorescent tubes and replace them with LED tubes? Um, right, a bit of a no, I think is the short answer. Now, if the LED tubes have been manufactured by the same person who manufactured the fitting, then yes, you can. If the answer to that then is no, then you're changing, you're, 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 um, you're invalidating the ATEC certificate on that fitting. Um, a fluorescent 
that's fluorescent light fitting. It's designed to be used with a fluorescent tube. It has um, starters, um, control gear contained within there. If you're putting an LED tube in, you don't need the starter, so you're bypassing all of that. Um, technically, you, you are invalidating the warranty, so I'd always say no to that, um, but certainly take further guidance um, as necessary. Brilliant, thanks Andy. Um, we've just got another one here from Jan. She asks, can I purchase an LED, an LED gear tray to fit inside the housing of an existing fluorescent? So why would I purchase a whole new LED fitting? Um, okay, um, so there are manufacturers out there who shall remain nameless, who offer LED upgrade trays to the equipment. However, what we would say in this instance is, it's quite likely that those existing luminaires have been on site for quite a period of time. Um, UV destabilization will have a significant effect on that existing housing. Most of these are gonna be GRP, and GRP does react with, obviously natural, um, with UV and sunlight, so, you're going to have degradation on the gaskets, it's colouring of the lens or the cover, uh, and possibly even degradation and cracks on the mounting clips, depending on what they're made of. So yes, you can use um, a retrofit kit, but actually, it's going to be quite expensive, as we said just on in the in the presentation. These retrofit kits can be as expensive as the fittings themselves. And you might end up having to replace a lot more than just the just the tubes. You might be looking at the uh, at the clips that hold the the lens in place uh, and gaskets, etc. So I think from an economical point of view, I would look at replacing the entire fitting. Brill, thanks, Andy. Um, we've got. Another one here. I'm assuming they mean Raytec, but so I'm. I think they're asking, do Raytec have retrofit gear tray for existing two times eighteen and two times thirty six lights? Uh, no, we don't. Is the short answer. Um, Raytec have only ever been an LED manufacturer, so we never had a product that was old lighting technology, be that fluorescent, sodium, metal halide, mercury blended, we've only ever been LED. So we can only supply and would only really recommend a complete new LED luminaire. Some of our competitors do, but well, again, I'm not going to go into detail on that. Brilliant, thanks Andy. So that's actually all the questions um, that we've got at the moment. So I just want to say a big thank you to um, everyone who attended the webinar today. Um, so we're going to, we we'll probably will stay around for a few more minutes just in case any more do come in. Um, but if not, then we'll just, we'll just end the webinar there, but we will stay around for a few more minutes. Thanks again. Thank you. We well, have got another question here, Andy and David. Um, so Daniel asks, can we replace just the LED inside the Raytec luminaire? Uh, yes, you can. So um, it does though depend on which generation of um, linear fitting you have. Um, because the modular, because we're tech, we design the fittings as a modular build, um, all parts are available. Um, now, to replace a light engine on site, um, it's possible, it's a little bit tricky. Um, we would recommend um, 
either some on-site assistance. So if it's the UK, please get in touch with me, um, and I'll happy to come to site and show you how it's done. We'd rather it be done back in a factory environment. Now that's not necessarily our factory, um, but it could be your own workshop. Because if you're working at, uh, if you're working above your head, you're effectively working upside down. It, it's not a particularly um, complex process to replace the the LEDs in a Raytec linear, um, but it, it it would be better in a workshop as opposed to actually on site and in situ. Um, but if you've got specific uh, specifics you want to discuss, um, please get in touch with me directly. Um, either if you have my details directly or via the sales inbox, uh, the sales email at Raytec, please. Probably Thank also you. worth mentioning on, on that, Charlotte, the, the replacement of LED boards, as Andy says, of course, yes, it's uh, it's possible, but it should not be considered in the same context as relamping of uh, fluorescent tubes. Um, the LED boards uh, typically have uh, a life expectancy greater than 100,000 hours. Uh, the LEDs themselves, uh, L70s, are up at 150,000 hours. So it would need to be something very abnormal um, happening probably in the wider lighting circuit for, uh, for, for one of these light engines to fail. Okay, brilliant. Um, we have actually got another question that's come in. How many drivers do we use for the fittings? That's what we've... Uh, so, oh, do you want to do this one, David? Yeah, I can do, and and unfortunately, it's uh, it's an answer. Of it depends. Um, so we have a, a mixture of drivers and, and fittings, and it, and it does depend on what the exact fitting is that you're looking at. If you're looking at just a um, WL84 Spartan WL84, it has um, it has one driver. Um, Non-emergency has one driver. If you uh, move up to a four-foot fitting, a WL168. Um, you then have two drivers um, as you're introducing uh, both a uh, standard mains and uh, an emergency uh, power supply. So never more than never more than two drivers um, per product when we're talking linear, but it does vary as you move between two foot, four foot, uh, high output, standard output, and emergency. And additionally, I'll just add to that. From the older first generation of linear, um, we actually use two drivers on a four foot. So uh, yeah, very much depends on which variation of Spartan linear you have. Now to look at, they do all look the same. Um, there are minute differences between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2, um, but all of the parts that we currently offer as spares are all backwards compatible. So whether you've got a Gen 1 or a Gen 2 fitting, that shouldn't make any difference as to being able to replace the driver. Yeah, also worth noting in terms of support, uh, as per um, ICF standards, we um, we support the fittings uh, for a minimum of 10 years after build. Uh, so yeah, uh, plenty of longevity within the product with that respect. That's brilliant. Um, I think that's all the questions that I can see. If we have missed any, we'll get back to you offline. But I don't know. Um, oh, we've had just had one come in there. Um, so Daniel's asking why the temperature of a standard and emergency emergency linear luminaire are not the same, like the temperature ranges. So that uh, is quite simply down to the fact you're introducing batteries um, into into the mix when you're when you're going in, in, with an emergency product. Um, currently, we're using uh, nickel cadmium batteries, uh, which uh, don't perform over the same temperature range as uh, as a non-emergency fitting. So the limiting factor uh, to answer your question is the batteries. Um, worth noting. Uh, in the in the development plan, the product development plan for the next generation of uh, emergency fittings, we will be aligning uh, those. So you will get the full. Um, is it minus uh, minus forty plus sixty? Uh, is our target across the entire range? So 
um, to kind of take a step forward from your point, it is in the development roadmap to uh, eliminate that little discrepancy. And that will probably be coming within the next uh, eight to 12 months. Um, there is another one here. So they've asked, are there any exemptions on the certification? For example, if there's a number of fitting LED fittings on site that aren't working and the, fi and the fixtures need replacing. Not quite sure what is heading out there, Charlotte. Uh, okay. If it's if it's asking, is there is there any plan extensions or of the uh, if it's related to Roche uh, with ROHS, which is what's kind of driving the the ban? I'm not aware of any. It's already had its uh, sundown period. I'm not aware of any extensions or exemptions uh, being available for it. Okay, that might be one that we come back to you online offline. Sorry. Um, yeah, if we can get it yeah, that's fine. I think that might be it with the questions. Yep, I think that's it. Brill, if we have missed any questions, we'll um, get back to you offline. But yeah, that's that's it for the webinar. Thanks everyone for joining. I, ho I hope it was uh, was useful. Thank you very much. See you now. Bye. Bye. Bye.